Very often, discoveries are made by accident. And uh, my discovery of phobias, in fact, my discovery of this whole thing was an accident. Uh, I was a psychiatrist uh, hired by the New York City Board of Education to help diagnose and treat dyslexics because at that time they thought it was an emotional problem. They, uh, this goes back 60 years ago. At that time, there were no behavior problems in the schools, believe it or not. Uh, it was thought that parents push their children too much, and that's why they have learning and reading problems. And I came to rec and then the other theory at the time was that they were brain damaged. So there was a psychological theory and a thinking brain damage problem. And as a psychiatrist, beginning with zero, knowing nothing, I knew it wasn't an emotional problem because uh, not all the kids' parents pushed them. <laughs> Some some kids and kids came coming from Harlem at that time without parents did better than kids with parents and tutors and everything else. So there didn't seem any socio any to be any sociological problems or economic problems that were primary. They contributed, but they weren't primary. And they couldn't be brain damaged. Many of them had IQs of 140. They were gifted. How the hell do you have 140 IQ and have Tremendous brain damage. Brain damage for the re in the reading center, the writing center, the spelling center, the math center, uh, the concentration centers, and the phobic centers. Didn't make any sense. And by being determined, I recognized that what united the group were balance and coordination problems. And I discovered that dyslexia was due to an inner ear cerebellar problem. And then I discovered a very simple rapid treatment in the ear improving medications. And what started to happen, believe it or not, <clears throat> is by treating these individuals and looking to see if their reading improved, many of them say, you know, my concentration is better, my distractibility is better. And parents would say, you know, my children aren't as anxious, they're not as disruptive, they're not as impulsive, uh, they're not as active. I recognize that it also improved their ADHD and that the two were combined. And the most important insight in many ways and unpredictable was that many patients said, you know, I'm no longer afraid of heights or elevators or escalators. I never knew they were even afraid of it because I never asked them any questions. Now, I was a psychoanalyst trained to analytically treat these phobias and I never did too well with them. They didn't respond favorably. And suddenly, I began to recognize there was an inner mechanism responsible for 90% of the phobias that these patients had and 90% of their anxiety symptoms. So what happens is one symptom combines with another, combines with another, and leads, in addition to secondary reactions and rejections and failures, and you've got a nightmare on your hands between primary symptoms and, and secondary negative symptoms. So that by persevering, which I think is probably the most important thing I can tell children with these problems or children in general and adults, persevering is the most important weapon a person has. It's as important as intelligence, if not more so, because there are many bright gifted people that don't succeed because they're not determined. They take their gifts for granted and they don't prioritize and they don't drive. They, they don't have a, a determination that you need to succeed. So, I was then able to group phobias into simple inner ear mechanisms that nobody else ever understood before. And I was successfully able to treat them rapidly and dramatically. There are balance and coordination phobias. As I said before, fears of heights. If you look down, if your balance isn't right, you're going to be afraid of falling. Makes sense. Phobias were considered irrational. They're not irrational. There's a rational basis for them. We just didn't know what they were. Realistically, with your eyes closed and your brain closed, you can call them irrational. But there's a cause for every kind of situation out there, if only we can find it. And by accident, my patients reveal it to me. Now, you can do brain scans and CAT scans and MRIs. You never would have stumbled on this insight. Just by sitting down and listening carefully to patients, 
They tell you what nobody is bright enough to figure out on their own if you have the patience to listen and the interest to listen. And my patients have taught me everything I know and they are still doing the same thing by volunteering their stories in my books and their photos and the same on my website. So that I think it's extremely important to have this understanding for phobias that are primary and then stress and anxiety that are secondary. You add one to another and you can easily understand why there are so many failures in this world. And by comparison, the medications we use are harmless. They're almost, by comparison, uh, they should be viewed as uh, nutrients, especially in intelligent hands.